water. Every living thing needs it to survive. Plants and animals depend on it. And so do you and I. We drink it, bathe in it, and we play in it. So it's important that we learn how to take care of it. That's why we're on a discovery voyage on the San Francisco Bay on this floating laboratory where marine biologists check up on the quality of the water and what lives in it. Here you go, Mary. Oh, thank you, Mark. You bet. You know, no one knows better than the creatures of the sea just how important it is to keep our water clean and healthy. And here's a story about one who helped a fisherman find that out. It's called Jack, the Seal, and the Sea. Okay, Lavar, are we ready to put the net in the water? I'm ready. One, two, and heave! Oh, good. Okay, let's drop the float line. Dropping the float okay, line. Door. And let's let the line go out. How's it going? Going good. How's over there on your Mary side? Nishimito is one of the ecologists aboard who studies fish and marine life and the health of their environment. So Mary, what are we going to be doing here today? Well, we both know that animals can't talk to us, but they can still tell us about today. So we're going to be looking at the animals. We'll be looking at where they live, and we'll also be looking at what they eat. What are some of the things the creatures in this bay eat? They eat a variety of things. In fact, while we're waiting to catch some fish, we can go to the bow of the boat and take a look at the small thing. Smallest thing? What's that? That's plankton. Plankton? Yeah, let's go. Well, let's see if we've got any plankton in here, huh? Well, let's see what we have. Well, how'd we do? Take a look. Whoa! Look very carefully. Oh, look, look. You can see the little tiny animals swimming around. Yeah. You can actually see them swimming. That's plankton, These huh? are the animal plankton. Mm -hmm. The plant plankton are too small for us to see, uh -huh. but we can see that there's a lot of animal plankton in there. Now, and what can we tell from this? Well, this tells us that because we have a lot of animal plankton, what do they eat? Um, animal plankton eats plant plankton. That's right. They eat <laughs> plant plankton. That's right. right. And so this tells us that there must be enough food out there for them to eat. Aha. So there's a nice balance in here then, yes. huh? Of plant and right. animal plankton. And that means that it's a healthy environment in the ocean. That's a good indication of that. Terrific. Oh, I think it's time for us to pull the net. All hands, that's us. All right. <laughs> Can you bring it in? Yeah, here we go. Woo! Right. Woo! Ooh, they're Ooh. jumping. Woo! Well, it looks like there's something big in there, too. <laughs> <laughs> what now? Is All right. In the water? Right in the water. Wow. You ready? Yeah. What we got? Whoa! 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 This is a leopard shark. A leopard Ooh, he's shark. Got a lot of a lot of strength still, too. Feel all the muscles he, in his he body? like he's all mm -hmm. muscle. And why don't you go ahead and see what it feels like. Rub your hands along its body. Touch its body. I don't, and, I don't, and I've never felt anything like this before. Well, and rub your fingers this way along really? the body. Oh, wow. That's feel that? really rough. It's really rough. Yeah. Uh -huh. And on the bottom. Oh, look where its mouth is. Wow. Where do you bottom. think he uh, feeds? The bottom of the ocean? Yeah, it feeds really? on the bottom. Right. And in fact, this shark at this size feeds mostly on crabs uh -huh. and shrimp. Can we put them uh -huh. in the water now? Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. Wow. So a lot okay. of these, a lot uh, of these. Wow! What what's that? Great. This is a skate. He's huge. Look at that. Take a look at a good close look at it. Notice these big fins. These are the pectoral fins uh -huh. on this fish. Uh -huh. And uh, what do you think it uses these pectoral fins these for? These make him swim. He flies through the water. Right. He, like that. That, that's it. He uses them just like wings. He flies through the water. This with must these be a fast fins. fish, isn't it? Well, um, he can be fast. Uh -huh. uh, he can um, speed up quickly. Now, what's that uh, over there oh, by, your, by your hand? That's a good observation you just made. These are parasites. Really? These are called copepods. 
So these are and animals these are, that are growing, are growing on, on the skate. The, uh, skate. Right. Um, parasites become a problem if the animal becomes weakened, and uh, then the parasites can more easily take advantage of the animal, right. and we'll find more of them on the body. So a, a, a fish or an animal in, in the ocean would be weakened due to... It could be weakened due to disease, uh -huh. um, or and pollution, pollution. also yeah. known to be a culprit. Yeah. Right. So, can, let's put them back in the water yeah. so you can continue to breathe. Yeah, you bet. Mary, are there any uh, fish in here that eat plankton? Yes. Uh -huh. In fact, this is our plankton feeder. This is the top smell. Top smell, uh -huh. yeah. And he is a surface swimming fish. Mm -hmm. He has a silvery white belly mm -hmm. so that when uh, predators from below look above, they don't see him. Aha, uh -huh. more camouflage, uh -huh. uh -huh. huh? Now, what kind of a fish would, 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 that eat, would this? eat this? Something that would eat this. That's uh -huh. a good thing. How about this guy here? Yeah, Whoa. yeah. See, these plankton feeders are very important because from the plankton, mm -hmm. the, um, the plankton feeders eat the right. plankton, and right. then these larger fish will eat our plankton feeders. Right. And so we've got a food chain going here. Right. And then we eat the larger fish. We're at the top of the food chain. And what happens, Mary, of pollution? enters that food chain. If pollution enters the food chain, we could um, lose our fellow travelers on this planet. Our friends under the sea. Yes. Yeah. And then ultimately harm ourselves in the process. Yes. Sadly. Yeah. Pollution affects everything. And the more there is of it, the greater the damage. Not long ago in Alaska, an oil tanker accidentally spilled tons of oil. All right. Wow. Good. All right. We've got something. Let's bring that in. Hold it right there. Could you lower it just a bit, LeVar? A little bit more. Right there. That's good. Wow. Let me... Look at that. Mud. <laughs> Take a look at it. Touch it. Whoa. Smell it. Mm, I love mud. It doesn't smell bad at all. No, in fact, it, it smells good. That's a, a good smell. Yeah, that's a good it's sign. Like fresh. Uh huh. If mud if, can smell clean, this this smells like clean mud. Yeah. If the mud um, smells like rotten eggs, it's a real bad sign. That there's, there's uh -huh, pollution that, around that here. That there's um, no oxygen in the mud, ah. and that it could very well be caused by pollution. Right. Yeah. What else is in here? Okay. Let's see what else is in here. In fact, we've got these screens here, uh -huh. and so I'll put some mud into the screens, and why don't you take a hose uh -huh. and start to spray it down, and we'll find out who lives in the mud. Okay. Mud turns out to be one of the most important habitats here in the bay. Really? Mm -hmm. So there are actually animals that live here, huh? Wow, there seems oh, to be all no. kinds of stuff in here. What are these tube-like things here, Mary? Oh, these are mud tubes. Mud tubes. Uh-huh, and if you look at their hollow, uh -huh. you can see the opening. Yeah. And uh, maybe we can find the creature that makes these tubes. There's an animal that lives in this? Uh-huh, this is a home for uh, an animal that I think we're going to be able to find in here. So he makes his own her. house, huh? Mm -hmm. There's an, actually an animal in here someplace. Mm -hmm. huh? Ooh, what's that? What's oh, up there? Oh, wow. Wow. We ran into something else here. This is a spider crab. Wow, look yeah, at it. Yeah, look at these long, thin legs, like a spider. So there are all uh -huh. sorts of animals that live in this uh -huh. mud, aren't there? There sure are. Oh, here's another there's one. There's another one. There wow, we've got quite a few in here. Let's see if we can find what made that too. Whoa, look at this. What's this here? I think we found the creature that made that tube. Worm. The worms make these tubes. Wow. Using um, the mud that they live in and the mucus. Here's one that's in the tube. Wow, look at that. Look at that. Oh, here he comes. Wow. Look at that. The tube worm uh -huh. is much like the earthworms on land. They are the decomposers. And what they do is that they eat the plant and animal that have died. Really? Mm -hmm. So they're very important here in the bay. Uh -huh. We also have the clams. Mm -hmm. And clams are important here in the bay because they filter the water and they eat the plankton in the water. Uh -huh. So they act as a filtering system. Right, right. So this mud then is, is another fragile ecosystem. That balance has to be maintained in order for the the general health of the bay to be in balance. Yes, uh -huh. and the mud that we have here is very important here in the ecosystem. Right. Important habitat. You bet. Well, 
people are more aware of the dangers of pollution these days. And so, things are getting better. And how about you? Lots of things that you can do. And lots of ways that you can help. But if it's water you're into, then here are some books that are guaranteed to make a splash. But you don't have to take my word for it. Okay, little buddy. Back into the water. One thing I found out today is the more you know about your environment, the more you care. It's up to us to keep our waters clean and healthy. This planet is our home. And it's the only one we've got. I'll see you next time. out to sea, we looked for whales. Tonight, we're going to discover what's in our bay. The Marine Ecological Institute here in Redwood City conducts discovery voyages on their ship, the Inland Seas. We're going to join a group of eighth graders from Law and Trotter School in Menlo Park, and we're all going to go out into the deep blue bay. This is Merritt Toole, and he is a marine biologist. Mm -hmm. And now, What's going to happen when the students come on board? When they come on board, they'll be divided into three teams. And one team will study the fish, put out a fish net and catch them. Another team will take a look at the geology and the, of the water and, and the sediments and the chemistry. And another team will take a look at the invertebrates that they catch. Invertebrates are what? Animals without backbones. Uh -huh. We're going to see those today? Yes. OK, now, what happens, say, at the fishing station? All right, a team will go back and take the otter trawl, the fish net, and put it out, and they'll drag it for about 10 minutes. And they'll all get back there and pull, out, pull it in, and when it gets on board, the fish will be taken and put in, into a uh, fish tank, and then they'll be identified and measured by the students using fish keys. Now, what's the purpose about hauling in all these fish and animals from the, from the bay? Well, to get the kids to appreciate and the students to appreciate the fish. Uh, most people don't have much empathy for a fish. It's a cold-blooded animal. It doesn't have fur or anything, and they really can't, doesn't feel cuddly. So a fish is just something that... that we eat. Yeah, we eat. So a fish, if a person gets to handle a fish, pretty soon they get to feel comfortable with it, and they get to appreciate it a lot more than they do. All right, what we have here is a large scavenger. All right. It's really a shark. It's that is a real shark. That is a real oh. shark. That's oh, a brown smooth that. hound shark. Oh, move it the other way. I don't All right. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's good. Right, reach out and touch him. Reach out and touch him? Rub him one way, then the other. Yeah. Ah! Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. 